Hey guys, Mr. Cheese Gaming here, and welcome back to more of Let's Play Pokemon Emerald. Last time we went through Route 101, I got them nerdy by explaining Rumpel's evolution. And in this part, well, we're gonna continue on with Pokemon and hopefully not nerd out so much. But first things, I want to point out something. Now, I can't believe that I only noticed this in when I played through Pokemon Crystal when I first noticed this. But here's the thing. How did I not notice this when this line is used in every single main series Pokemon game ever made? Here is this line. We hope to see you again. What is wrong with you, woman? This is a hospital a hospital you're not even and on top of that it's free perhaps it's, it's government funded so I'm not paying you a assuming that it's government funded I'm not paying you a cent so you must have some really messed up fetish of healing or at least seeing injured Pokemon Possibly including those that are at near death. Nurse Joy is a sadist. Or a reverse sadist, or whatever. Either way, she has something messed up about her. But, anyways, talk to this guy and. Uh, everybody recognize this song. This is a Pokemon Mart. Let's just look for our blue roof. We sell a variety of goods including Pokeballs for catching Pokemon. Yes, you catch Pokemon in ball. Okay, stop being dirty. You said that I told myself that I wouldn't be dirty like I have been in the last few playthroughs of Pokemon. But anyways, here I like you have this as a promotional item. I got a potion. That is pretty much the only reason why I talked to this guy. Basically, what it does is then it um, gains 20, well, replenishes about 20 HP. Very good early on in the game, but anyways, welcome. How may I serve you? Well, you're not serving Pokeballs yet. However, you are um, serving at least some healing items. A antidote that... um removes poison. Poison basically inflicts damage on your Pokemon over time and even um, inflicts damage outside of battle. Paralyze heal basic um, heals paralysis. Paralysis basically gives a 50% chance of the Pokemon um, failing to make a move, failing to attack, and awakening basically um, wakes up a Pokemon. When a Pokemon is asleep, it cannot battle. However, um, sleep, um, wears off eventually. Though, it's probably not good to wait lead until your Pokemon, wait for your Pokemon to wake up while it's being beaten to death. Are you being beaten up and not wake up? Anyways, I'm not wasting my money because, well, we won't encounter those status conditions until a little bit later. Well, anyways, this is the way to Route 102. Let's go ahead and... Ah, wait! Don't come in here! I just discovered the friends of a rare Pokemon! Just wait until I finish catching them, okay? Footprints! Everybody likes feet, right? Right? And I just, and I said that Nurse Joy has a strange fetish. Um, uh, forget it. I shouldn't be talking about strange stuff like that. But anyways, we're, um, making our way to, um, the only other route that we can go to. Route 103. Now, there is one new Pokemon we encounter here, and that Pokemon is... Someone outside my dorm. No, wait, yes, the uh, Pokemon you can counter is called someone outside my dorm. But no, um, 
The Pokemon we can encounter here is Wingle, although at a very, very, very rare chance of encountering it. Although, once you finally reach the big oceans, they're certainly not rare anymore. Um, if you want one now, however, it's going to be rare. Like I said, it's going to be rare, but, um, like I said, you, but don't worry. You're gonna find a lot more of them later on. Um, their stats, and besides, their stats aren't that exciting, but he does, um, possess a water gun, so, um, he's somewhat useful for players who did not choose Mudkip as a starter, and he's especially useful to Chork Chicks users, because that would give you an advantage of, on the first gym. Well, Wing Attack is available after just a few levels of training, so he's a useful member of the team in the early parts of the game, but he's not very helpful later on, so I don't think he's worth your trouble so early. Aside from that, you can find your typical Puchiana and Zigzagoon. Which, by the way, I forgot to talk about Zigzagoon. Sorry about that, but... Zigzagoon is actually very common throughout the land of Hoenn. Unless you're playing Pokemon Emerald, in which case it's only a 5% chance and you gotta have to deal with the hordes of Pugiana. Yeah, switched around. Pugiana used to be 5% chance of encountering, now it's a 45% chance of encountering. And strangely enough, Professor Bush was attacked by the rarer of the species. Um. He's actually, um, he's okay attack-wise, but, and, not very defensive, but very good speed stat, as well as very good, and a decent attack stat, but what makes him very special is his, um, ability, which is Pickup, which gives you a 10% chance to gain a free item after battle, even if you don't use Zigzagoon in battle. And in Pokemon Emerald, there's an added bonus effect where, um, the higher level your Zigzagoon is, it's going to pick fine, better items. And Light Noon, which Zigzagoon evolves into, also has the pickup ability, which, well, either way, I highly recommend catching a Zigzagoon. Unlike Wingle, it's actually very worth picking it up, and I, for... And please forgive me for not mentioning that on Route 101 when you can actually find Zigzagoon. And you know what? There is a trainer battle coming up. Actually, the very first trainer battle, so I'm going to do a small amount of off-screen grinding. I recommend just until you reach level 10, so just give me a small moment. As soon as I stopped the recording, I came across a Zigzagoon. I wish I had Pokeballs because I really want to catch one. That Zigzagoon actually gave me a level up, so I guess he's not entirely pointless. Twice in a row! You are supposed to be rare! Why am I getting you twice in a row? By the way, didn't I say level 10? I meant level 7. Level 7 should be good enough, and... Take a look at who it is. I'll peek right over the ledge at you while I take a sip. I'm actually drinking... Sprite instead of my usual Powerade, but... Anyways... Let's go ahead and talk to her. Let's see. The Pokemon found on Route 103 include... I already covered it, May. No need to tell the viewers. No need to tell the viewers because Robert here is to be the nerd instead. Oh, hi, Brendan. Oh, I see. My dad gave you a Pokemon as a gift. Since we're here, let's have a quick battle. I'll give you a taste of what being a trainer is like. Well, that's exactly what your father wanted.
Pokemon Trainer May would like to battle, and I actually like them. I have to admit, I like the trainer music in here. And what she's gonna send out? Well, she's gonna send out a Trico. So long as you chose a Mudkip. If you if you chose Trico, she's gonna choose Toy Chick, and if you chose Toy Chick, she's gonna choose Mudkip. Like any other rival, she's going to choose the one that has a type advantage over your own. Thankfully, it's actually probably a good idea to have your Pokemon at, well, a good level um, beforehand. So, let's go ahead and let's try to lower his accuracy with a Mud Slap. And it's not going to be effective. However, yes, we lowered your accuracy. That's all I wanted. Okay, he's going to lower my defense, but I can counter that by lowering his offense and turn. Unfortunately, he was faster than me. How are you faster than me when... Well, then again, ground type Mudkip isn't known for a good speed stat. And you missed because I lowered your accuracy, huh? Yeah, but of course you countered it with a critical. Doing twice the damage and yes, finally defeated you. Gained a lot of experience. And defeated you on my first try. Wow, that was great, Brandon. You are pretty good. And got 300 Pokedolls from her. Or poke, as they're officially called. I think I know why my dad has an eye out for you now. I mean, you just got that Pokemon, but it already likes you. It's actually very hard in Pokemon to lower the friendship stat. You have to actually put in an effort. And it's only good for frustration, so... You might be able to befriend any kind of Pokemon easily. Well, it's time to head back to the lab. To the lab! Okay, to the hover car, then the lab. Okay, then to Jimmy's front lawn, then the lab. Nah, just... Man, I loved Jimmy Neutron as a kid. That's probably why I played the GBA version. And May is right there. Are you going for another battle? Thankfully, that's not the case. Instead, we're just going to follow her right back to Little Root. Which shouldn't be hard at all because there are ledges around the way that you can just jump over as a shortcut. Brandon, over here, let's hurry home. Very well, gal. Very well. Jumping over ledges to avoid the tall grass. And here we are in Little Root Town. Let's go to the lab and. Finally, we actually get to enter this building. And automatically walk up. Oh, hi, Brendan. I heard you beat me on your first try. That's excellent! Wouldn't it be funny if we actually lost? I mean, you would say the same dialogue and you'd just be like... Shut up. They've been helping with my research for a long time. Okay, why am I giving him Dr. Elm's voice? Oh well. May have been extensive history as a trainer as well already. Here, Brennan, I ordered this for my research. I think you should have this Pokedex. It's a handheld encyclopedia. The Pokedex is a high-tech tool that automatically makes a record of any Pokemon you meet or catch. My kid, Meg, goes everywhere with it. However, my kid catches rare Pokemon and records its data in the Pokedex. Why, Meg looks out for me while I'm out doing fieldwork. And shows me. She forgot that one time and you got an attack by a equivalent of a raccoon. Wow, you are incompetent. Oh well, Brendan, you got a Pokédex too. That's great, just like me. Of course you got. I got a Pokédex. You were right there when your father handed it to me. I've got something for you too. 
Yay, we got Pokeballs. Now we can actually capture our Zigzagoon. It's fun that you can get a lot of Pokemon. I'm going to look all over the place because I want different Pokemon. If I find any cute Pokemon, I'll catch them with my Pokeballs. Sounds so wrong. It's a serious looking machine. The browse must use this for research. What does it do? What does it do? Out of every laboratory that I've visited, after going through so many science museums as a child, I have no idea what that is. I'll tell you what it is. It's a torture device. No, it's just a made-up equipment. But before we head off, we see our dear mother is waiting for us. And oh my God, we can actually go behind buildings! Yay! It's just about, it's like how excited it was when I played X and Y and learned you can actually sit on benches. Brendan, Brendan, did you introduce yourself to Prof Birch? Whoa, you got an adorable Pokemon. I see she likes monkey. I said I want to make that mean. You got it from Professor Birch. How nice. Your father's child, all right. You look good together with Pokemon. Here, honey. If you're going out on an adventure, wear these running shoes. They'll zip in your step. They'll zip your step. They'll put a zip in your step. The shoes came with instructions. You know, in case you don't know how to use shoes. Because we expect no one to. Because the company doesn't expect anyone to know how to use shoes. And apparently, I don't expect you to know how to use shoes either. So I'm reading you the instructions. Where's the B button on this thing? You have your very own Pokemon now. Your father will be overjoyed. But please, be careful. If anything happens, you can come home. Go on. Go get him, honey. Whee! Whee! Yay! I can run! I can run! I can run! I can run! I can run like the wind! Oh, man, I'm so happy. Running shoes, best feature of Pokemon. Anyways, that's it for this part on Let's Play Pokemon Emerald. Next time, we'll see what new places we can explore with our running shoes. I will see you guys next time.